Marvel's rebooting the Ultimate Universe, resetting whatever you want to call it, and it's being done by Jonathan Hickman. Son, son, son. Y'all know how much I love Jonathan Hickman. I'm sorry, I'm so excited, people. I'm going to get more excited as this story goes on because what this does is this opens up two months ago, right? With what basically looks like a, like a heist. It's these guys who are literally riding in this unmarked van. They go busting into this building and it looks exactly like a kind of heist. I mean, you got armed soldiers and stuff in there. These guys roll in and just start shooting the plane place up. They take these guards out like that. Now they're using like hypersonic weapons and all kinds of stuff, super high tech stuff, which is way beyond what mercenaries would normally use. So right off the bat, we know these guys are being funded in some capacity by somebody else, right? They take out the armed guards. They even go to this poor girl and they tell her like, are you the manager here? And she's like, I mean, I don't, I'm not really a manager. They're like, but you have a key. And her response is like, yes, these guys even detonate a mini black hole. They create a singularity in this place. It sucks everything in and then disappears. It's crazy, right? It's it's nuts. Like within an instant, they're coming in, guns blazing, right? It's just, it's crazy. It's absolutely nuts. So what they end up doing is as they make their way into this facility, one of the guys tells them, this is not a bank. And they're like, we know. And so once they get to the location they're supposed to be at, they end up finding what looks like this giant room, right? This giant like black box with a door on it. Once they open it, we find out they're here to retrieve somebody. And the question's got to be asked, who in the world are they going through all this trouble for to get? Because one of the guys is like, we're being paid a lot of money, right? Like billions of dollars. And they're like, yes, right? The leader of them is like, yes, we're being paid all that money. But once they get in there, this guy is just like right on time. And when he turns around, it's the maker, son. It's the maker. These guys were hired to break out the maker. And let me tell you something, man. Son, son, son. All right. For those of you guys who don't know, the maker in the ultimate universe of Marvel Comics. And, and you know what? Let's explain the ultimate universe here for a second. Here's a quick 15 second explanation of the ultimate universe. The ultimate universe was launched in the year 2000 as an answer to the question, what if superheroes had emerged for the very first time in the year 2000? That was it. It kicked off with ultimate Spider-Man and just went forward from there. The maker is is the ultimate universe version of Reed Richards, who became a bad guy, and he is dope. But he's basically like Reed Richards from the main Marvel universe with zero restraint and nothing but nefarious intentions. This guy is amazing. I love his character so much. And so what he literally does here is he kind of has a little bit of fun with these guys, right? Remember, the maker's incredibly intelligent. He's the smartest person in the ultimate universe. Next level, right? It's just a whole different world when it comes to the ultimate universe here. And where the guys ask the question, they say, where's our money? His response is ambiguous at best, right? Where all money is, floating in the ether, awaiting summons from an imaginary state to a more believable fiction which is usually true, right? Money's not real, at least that's what some people say. And so one of these guys responds and says, it sounds like you don't really have the money. And his answer is, oh, I promise you, whatever it is, I most certainly have it. Now, here's the thing. You do not enter into a bargain with the maker lightly because nine times out of 10, it's like entering into a bargain with Mephisto. You could do it, but you do it at your own risk. There's gonna be some kind of a catch, some kind of caveat. And I'm gonna tell you guys right now, what happens to these dudes Man, it's gruesome. It's straight up gruesome, but it's nothing compared to what the maker's about to do here in a little while, man, because son, 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 this man's got a bone to pick and everybody's about to suffer, right? Like everybody's getting a piece of this pie, whether they want it or not. So these guys, like once they really start realizing there's no real money to be had here, but they ask the question, they say, so so what you're telling me is you hired us to break you out, but the, this guy who's so capable and so intelligent didn't have, the, didn't have the ability to break himself out? No, 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 there's gotta be something bigger going on here. What they did is they had actually retrieved an artifact and then brought it to the maker as part of the contract, right? The agreement that was struck between all of them. And so as he starts talking to them, he asks them like about their individual names and their identities, kind of getting to know them on a personal level. One of the guys who's here, his name is Jackson. He's not supposed to be here. Instead, it was supposed to be a guy named Keith Conrad, but he basically got cold feet, he backed out, and the rest of the crew killed Keith for the fact that he defected. But Reed goes on to have this like amazing statement, right? He says, the unforeseen complications of impatience and ennui. Trapped here, I'd forgotten what most people call discipline. I, of course, planned for overlap, but the genetic sequencing was for you four for a reason. Each and every ingredient is what makes for good soup. 
This will present as a less than 1% anomaly. Most people would miss it, but I wouldn't. And he certainly wouldn't, which vexes me to no end. I suppose my choice now is a subtle prayer or a more on brand message. And one of the guys responds and saying like, it was the last minute, right? Like literally this guy bailed out. We did the best we could with what we had. We had to grab this guy. And the response here of Reed is very, very telling, right? Like pay attention to this. He says, your best. There was one of my therapists in here who before I did what had to be done, did have a surprising effect on me. He encouraged and challenged me in a way I did not believe was possible. His ideas of acceptable goals and personal betterment were predictably short-sighted, but he actually did make me want to be a better man, a better man with better goals. Now, this is not some altruistic thing. This is not Reed Richards understanding what's going on and saying, oh, you know, I've, I've, I've turned over a new leaf and I'm becoming a good guy. No, he's still a villain. He activates this device and the genetic sequencer merges all the mercenaries together, literally just like merges them. They get transmogrified into a version of Reed. And that's the 1% anomaly he was talking about because the genetic sequencing was based on each one of these individual guys. Had Keith actually shown up the way he was supposed to, this dude would look exactly like Reed down to a T. Such as it is, he's missing the scar and he's partially drooling. It's not the way that Reed is supposed to be. But one of the things that he says here as he walks away is, I do have limits. So in effect, evil Reed Richards is free in the main Marvel universe. Now, one of the things you guys are undoubtedly going to be asking is, yes, Raw, but I thought Ultimate Reed returned to the Ultimate Universe because I thought it already came back. Technically it did, right? Like he was supposedly contracted by the Council of Reeds and all that kind of stuff. It looks like Jonathan Hibben is ignoring all of that stuff. So we can ignore it too, right? You can largely even just treat this as though Ultimate Reed has just been here and you haven't seen him one time since the events of the end of Secret Wars. And in fact, even the statements that he makes run contrary to everything that's happened so far with his character and his appearance post Secret Wars, post 2015. So following this, in the aftermath of this whole Blackguard building explosion, right? Like Reed escaping, that was two months ago, right? Six weeks ago, you have main Marvel Universe Reed Richards and you've got Black Panther who are basically talking to each other. And one of the things to know here, and this is something that a lot of people tend to forget, they have a very, very close friendship. They've been friends for an incredibly long amount of time. It's the reason why in the aftermath of Doom War, when T'Challa lost the role of Black Panther after handing it over to Shuri, that Reed accompanied him down to meet Bast, the goddess, right? And then in turn, Bast made T'Challa the king of the dead. Reed was the one that had to vouch for him, right? That's how deep the relationship goes. They're more like brothers as opposed to friends. And so as they start talking here and as they start communicating, what they end up finding out is that this facility was a holding facility for damage control, right? Now here's the thing, damage control, nine times out of 10 in Marvel Comics, they're the cleanup crew, right? You never really see damage control on this side, which is basically putting people in these extremely secure facilities. And so once Reed realizes that this place is a damage control holding facility, it suddenly dawns on him who it is that's being held here. He figures out it's the maker. Now, once they get into that room, the maker whose face now looks the way that it's supposed to, and his body has presumably taken on at least the form and the mannerisms that it's supposed to, as soon as Reed walks in, he asks the question, maker, is that you, right? Are you really me? Is it, is it you that I'm looking at here? And the body, of course, immediately dissolves. And so what the maker was doing here was putting on a show. This was not by accident. It's not sloppy. And that's one of the things that I want you to notice here. Everything the maker does here is done with intention. There's no accidents. There's no coincidences. Nothing happens because it just sort of ended up that way. It's all according to design. That's how this guy works. And so where Black Panther asked the question, where in the world is this guy at, right? This evil version of you, who seemingly every bit as intelligent as you, the response of Reed is, I'm not worried about where he is. I'm worried about what he's doing. And so what we end up doing is we actually jump to about five weeks ago when the maker shows up to the Baxter building. Now remember, the Baxter building is the home of the Fantastic Four and it's got all these security systems, right? Retinal scans and all that kind of stuff but they're all predicated on the identity of Reed. The maker is Reed Richards from an alternate reality. The machine's not going to be able to differentiate between the two. And so the maker can just waltz right in. He walks right past Franklin who has no powers, right? He's not a reality warper anymore. He ends up 
going into the computer systems of Reed, and then he starts looking through everything. And so what Reed does, right, after the maker has been through there and Reed realizes that the maker had arrived there, Reed does the only thing he can do. He goes to the necropolis and he recalls the Illuminati. They're back, ladies and gentlemen. The Illuminati are back, yes. Now, there's also big differences here, right? Like, remember, when the Illuminati were first formed, this was the original team. This is what the team looked like, right? Captain America was revealed to be part of the Illuminati during the events of Original Sin back in the day, but he ended up joining the team after Professor Xavier was killed during the events of Avengers versus X-Men. So Captain America was never originally part of the roster, but the gang's all here, ladies and gentlemen, right? You got Doctor Strange, you got Iron Man, you got Black Panther, you got Professor Xavier, you got Nameless Submariner, you got Black Bolt, nobody cares. But you have like the, the original team back together, and that's awesome except for black bolt because black bolt sucks but the team basically starts asking the question what's going on so what they do is they put all their resources together right now check this out this is where things get nuts right they say that the maker came to wakanda and successfully stole enough vibranium to forge it into who knows what. That's no small thing, but only Reed Richards is allowed access on that level. Because this is an alternate version of Reed, he's able to access that stuff. You see the benefit of being the maker in the main Marvel Universe, right? Everybody trusts Reed Richards in the main Marvel Universe, right? He's part of the Fantastic Four. Suddenly you have an evil version of him. Nobody ever really sees that coming. The next thing we learn is that the maker went to a Tillin, which is not surprising because the Inhumans suck, and he stole a whole bunch of Terrigen Spheres that have enough energy to power massive cities for over a thousand years. After that, he went to the bridge. Now, as soon as I saw the bridge, I was like, what? No way, because the bridge is supposed to be gone. Right, the bridge is supposed to be destroyed. For those of you guys who don't know what the bridge is in Marvel Comics, it's one of the coolest things. So the bridge originally appeared in the Dark Reign line of comics as part of Marvel's kind of branding initiative. During this point in time, Reed Richards constructed the bridge in order to look into the multiverse, and that's when he first met the Council of Reeds. He was told by Susan Storm to shut the bridge off, but he lied to her. He lied to his wife. He actually ended up reactivating it and then traveled through. And that basically gives us the entirety of Jonathan Hickman's fantastic for a run going forward from that moment. Now, the bridge itself was destroyed at the end of Hickman's run, but it was brought back during the events of the collapse of the multiverse, right? The multiversal incursions. Do you guys remember that story? Jonathan Hickman's Avengers and New Avengers, the greatest comic book story ever told by man. It took like five years for them to finish it. Man, it was like, it was like the greatest comic book run of all time. But the thing here is that the bridge is supposed to have been gone, right? It's not supposed to be there. Apparently, Tony Stark has it, and he has it in some secret warehouse out there somewhere, right? Why does Tony Stark do that? Because Tony Stark's a dick, right? The other thing about this is that you end up having the maker who basically travels to the Sanctum Sanctorum of Doctor Strange, and he steals an immunity lance. He goes to Atlantis, and he steals from Atlantis, but he's stealing all these different artifacts, all these different things. And by whatever manner and whatever means, which they don't even understand how he was able to do it, he broke into Krakoa, right? The mutant island that can only be accessible by the mutant population. They don't even know how he did it, but he broke in there and he stole a Krakoan gate. They're supposed to be immovable, right? Once a Krakoan gate is planted, it can't be removed. It can't be taken out by any feasible means outside of like reality warping or something crazy like that. And so what ends up going on here, right? After Maker has stolen all this stuff, he goes to the one person that you would expect him to visit. Now, we know this. Anybody who's been reading Marvel Comics for a long time knows that this was going to happen. It was going to happen. These two were going to meet, right? The maker goes and visits Miles Morales, son. Yes, he goes and sees Miles Morales. Why? Okay, so here's the thing, man. Those, see, so those of you guys who are new to comic books, this is why this stuff is so amazing, right? So the thing about this is that the maker wakes him up, right? He wakes up Miles and he says, how can you possibly sleep with the world moving as it is? The gears of this fraudulent infernal machine grinding our bones to dust. And it takes Miles by surprise, right? He's like, who in the world are you? Now, this is one of those instances what I'm talking about where I say that like the makers met Miles before after the events of Seeker Wars during like absolute carnage king and black all that kind of stuff you can ignore all of that right just act like you've never seen the maker before but his response is have we not met 
I cannot tell with so many of you. The masks and monikers, and more than that, the repetitive nature of so many of you heroes. And where, where Miles asks, like, who are you? This guy responds, right? The maker responds and says, you are Miles Morales, and I am your brother. And where Miles doesn't know what he's talking about, he says, I read about it in his records. It was some trick of universal rebirth and reality shaping. But as I understand it, according to the secret history, it's something every creature on this planet in this universe shares. But you and I have something that sets us apart from them, apart from their shared history. We are the only two survivors of a dead universe, Miles, the only living children of gods erased from history. Did you know that? Now, here's what the maker's talking about, because if you're not familiar with comic books, you're probably like, what in the world is going on? Okay, so in Marvel Comics, and kind of referencing back to our explanation of the Ultimate Universe, the Ultimate Universe was really, really popular, but when the multiverse was basically collapsing and all these different universes were coming to an end, the final incursion, meaning the final two universes that collided, was the main Marvel Universe and the Ultimate Universe. Now, Miles Morales actually ended up stowing away on what was basically a safety vessel divided by the good guy Reed Richards, right? So when you got to the events of Secret Wars, Miles Morales remembered the entirety of the Ultimate Universe, the universe he came from, everything that had ever happened, the death of his mom, Rio, and the comics, the whole nine yards. And so because of that, once Secret Wars ended, Miles Morales ended up in the main Marvel Universe. And so one of the gifts that he was given by the Molecule Man, Owen Reese, which believe it or not, the reason why this happened is because Miles gave the Molecule Man a cheeseburger. You don't have to believe me, it's 100% true. <laughs> I'm not even lying, and that moment in the story was amazing. But the reward that was given to Miles as a result of that is that when he re-emerged in the main Marvel Universe, when Reed Richards set everything back to normal, Rio was brought back to life. So he finally got his family back. That's why if you read Miles or you're just now getting into Miles, that you go from the Ultimate Universe where his mom is dead when she was killed at the hands of Venom to suddenly she's alive. And so what ends up happening here is that as the two of them are talking, the maker literally tells Miles, he says, it would feel wrong to go back and to basically recreate all of reality without coming to you and talking to you first and asking you, do you wanna join me? Do you want to go back home? Now, the reality here is that Miles has settled in in the main Marvel Universe, right? This is his new home now. If he went back to the life that he had before, it would be the life with his father, his uncle Aaron, who's dead, his mom who was killed by Venom. There's nothing for him back in the way that things used to be. And so the result of this is he rejects the offer of the maker. And so the maker gives him an empty card and says, if you ever change your mind, you know how to get a hold of me, and he ultimately leaves. And so following this, you basically switch over to the here and now in this moment, right? The Illuminati have banded together and they're trying to basically stop the maker who's on top of the Baxter building with basically all these artifacts that he's gathered for the purpose of jumping back to his native reality. Not only jumping back to his reality, but resetting everything, rebooting everything. Now, initially the Illuminati do what they can, where they can, but understand this is Reed. Right, Whether it's an Ultimate Universe version, bad version of Reed, or the good version of Reed, he accounts for everything. And so what he does here is he opens up a portal right, to basically jump through and to send himself back to the Ultimate Universe. And you literally have like Black Bolt who screams because you know that's all he can do, right? Just scream like a little girl. And then you've got the other members of the Illuminati who were all using their powers. It doesn't do anything, right? The building gets leveled, the whole nine yards, nothing happens. Reed even looks at them, right? Like Maker looks at him, it's just like, you guys done? You guys finished? Because I mean, I've, I've got I got places to be. So if you guys are done, I'm gonna go ahead and jet. That's how little he cares about the situation. And so one of the last things he does is he asks main Marvel Universe Reed, if you could do it all over again, if you could go back to the moment when the Molecule Man gave you that power to reset the entirety of the Marvel Universe, if you had that moment to wipe me from existence, would you do it? And the response of Reed is, yes, I absolutely would have. And the maker says, I'll keep that in mind. And so with him jumping through the portal, the superheroes, the Illuminati are helpless to stop him. There's nothing they can do. And so what this does here, what this does, ladies and gentlemen, what this does is this switches over to a field trip. <gasps> oh, it switches over to a field trip, right? Like a science trip, right? You've got Peter Parker and you've got Liz, 
it's the origin of Ultimate Spider-Man, right? Like, it's the origin of Ultimate Spider-Man. They're there, they're looking around, they're doing all the kind of stuff that you would normally expect. Peter's taking a look at everything, and the radioactive spider makes its way down, and it lands on Peter Parker's hand, and the maker plucks it off. He takes the spider off of his hand. He prevents Peter Parker from becoming Spider-Man. That's literally, he's just like reworking and restructuring everything. I saw this and I was like, there's no Spider-Man in this universe. <laughs> like the maker's reworking and just restructuring everything. He's, he's rebuilding it all. It's crazy. With that being said, guys, we're gonna bring this video to an end. Now you know what this means, right? We gotta cover the ultimate universe. Thank you all for watching. I will catch you all later. Peace.